and welcome to this live class with me, Bryony Smythe, or Yoga with Bryony. I'm so excited to be here on Allo Moves, whether you're practice, practicing with me on IG or on the Allo Moves website. We are celebrating Allo Yoga's launch of the Pride Collection. This is Pride Month. It's not just about raising awareness, it's also about creating change, and that is difficult. I love this new Pride Collection because Allo is donating 100% of the proceeds to the Trevor Project, which is the nation's leading support system for crisis or suicide prevention. So thank you to Allo. Thank you to Allo Moves for having me here. And thank you to you guys for joining me for this class. I'm excited because I haven't taught something like this in a really long time. And it's so nice to be on my mat back in a yoga studio, even though you're not right here. I feel you right there. So make sure you have your yoga mat and we're going to get started. Any props that you might need, you might need blocks, probably not a strap, but definitely blocks if you're a little bit tighter in the body, which is okay. Uh, we're gonna work through a nice strong flow, modify as needed, rest when you need to. Maybe we'll work into some arm balances and inversions. Ooh, and the extra plus for me is I get to practice with you guys. So let's get started. Come into da to Tadasana with your feet hips width apart. You could even go a little bit wider, creating a bit more space between your feet. Look down at your feet, these beautiful feet that take us everywhere. Just honor them for a second. Lift your toes. Feel the ground, the mat underneath your feet. And when you lift your toes, begin to feel all four corners of your feet root down. Bring awareness to how the arches can lift, how the lifting of your toes engages the tops of your feet, your ankles, your shins, your calves, or I should say your quads. Take your gaze forward and your hands by your side. Take a deep, deep breath in here. Open your mouth, let it go. Rest your shoulders down your back. Let your toes drop down on the mat. Turn your palms forward. Open your heart up. That's what we need. We need to open up a bit. Dial into our body. Arrive on our mat. Take another deep breath in. Open your mouth. Sigh it out. Find your ujjayi breath. Just a slight restriction of the muscles at the back of your throat. Equalize your inhalations and your exhalations as much as you can. And as you do this, you'll notice that your mind arrives. Open your eyes. Turn your hands out as you inhale. Sweep your arms out to come up. Spread your fingers. Look up as your palms come to touch and draw your navel in. Now grab a hold of your thumbs and just pull your thumbs apart. Looks like that. And as you pull your hands isometrically apart, roll your inner biceps back so you can move your arms back. Now inhale, lengthen through each vertebra of your spine. As you exhale, lean over towards the left. Driving down through both of your feet, especially your right heel. Keep your ribs drawing in. You'll notice as you draw your ribs in, your tailbone might tilt down a bit. If you want to take it a little bit deeper into that side stretch, lower your left hand down to the left side of your leg. Turn your palm down towards the left and lean over a little more. I'll turn this way so you guys can see me better. Then inhale back up to center. And just switch sides. Lean over towards the right. Might look like I'm leaning to the left, but I'm leaning to the right. Take your right hand down, lean over just a little more. And the more you keep your ribs in, the more isolated that stretch is gonna be. I know I need it right now. Inhale back up to center. Lift your heart up again. Maybe your palms come to touch. Then turn your hands out and sweep your hands behind your back like you're swimming through water elegantly, as elegantly as possible. It's not that hard to take your hands behind your back. Interlace your fingers. I should say it's not that easy. <laughs> It's hard. Press your palms together. Keep a little bend in your elbows and then just hug your elbows in to lift your chest up. And instead of yanking your elbows back to straight like that, reach your knuckles down towards the ground behind you and lift your chest up. Take a deep breath in, fill your heart. 
As you exhale, bend your knees, fold down over your thighs. Relax your arms down, grab a hold of opposite elbows, making that box with your arms, just using that as extra weight. Now, you can stay here with your knees slightly bent and just shake your head out, releasing any unneeded tension from your neck. You could even sway your torso from side to side. And I like to do this sway here because it allows me to release all of that tension and stress from the muscles that line my spine. And then you can come to stillness, relax your head, lean a little bit of weight forward into the balls of your feet. Your heels stay down though. And if you'd like a little more sensation, begin to engage your quads and straighten your legs, lifting your sits bones up, pulling your torso, your crown of your head down towards the ground. You could even pedal out your legs if you're saying, Bri, this is too much. I'm extra sore from practice yesterday, so this feels nice. Then take your fingertips underneath your shoulders or on your shins if you can't reach the ground and inhale, find a flat back. Exhale, step back into tabletop position. So we're just gonna take a moment in this tabletop to really align your hands in the right position and engagement. Hands underneath your shoulders, spread your fingers. I like to have my index fingers forward. This is a lot better for your shoulders and your wrists, but you could always have your middle fingers forward if you like. Then grip the mat with your fingertips, root down through your base knuckles. Make sure your shoulders are right over your wrists. And now, Hug your hands in towards the midline of the mat so you really feel your pecs and your inner arms engage. Then what are we doing with the shoulders? Smile the collarbones just a little, but at the same time protract your shoulder blades and you'll find a nice engaged neutral. Now, you ready to work a little? I know I am. Go ahead and tuck your toes under. Keeping your toes tucked under here, we're gonna keep our knees down when we back bend. So if you're unsure, just watch first. Inhale, we back bend. Let your sits bones rise. Pull your chest through the gateway of your shoulders. Draw your shoulder blades down. Now when you exhale, we know this cat position, you round, spread your shoulder blades down, uh, spread your shoulder blades, draw your chin towards your chest, and then just lift your knees a tiny, tiny bit just to get that extra sort of accelerated variation of this pose. So put your knees down, inhale, lift your heart up. Find your back bend, stretching into the, uh, the front of your shoulders and your core. Then exhale, round. Lift your knees up just a little. Ooh, I can feel my lower belly. Let's do that three more rounds. Inhale. And exhale. Lift your knees up. Two more rounds. You've got this. Let's do it together. Inhale, back bend. And exhale, round. Lift the knees up just a tiny bit, but really protract the shoulder blades, chin to chest. Last one, inhale. Try to pull your hands back towards your feet. Lift your chest, maybe even look up. Now exhale, round. Lift your knees up a tiny, tiny bit. Now, can you dome your upper back even more? Keeping your knees almost touching the ground. Really, really protract. Woo inhale. Can you breathe here? <laughs> Exhale, downward facing dog. Now, when you transition from that position to down dog, you're really short. So go ahead and walk your hands slightly forward or your feet back. Go a bit longer in your downward facing dog. Look forward at your hands. Make sure they look like they did when you were in tabletop. Spread your fingers, grip the mat, hug your inner arms in. Then you can relax your head. And if you're feeling really crunched up, then put a little bend in your knees and push through your arms so that your outer hips draw up and back. Then draw your ribs and your navel in, and if it feels good for you right now in your practice, you can pedal out your legs. This pose has a lot of great benefits. When I teach my trainings, I always go back to downward facing dog being the pose of all poses because you're working on strengthening your proprioception in your hands, arms, and shoulders. You're also working on lengthening the backs of your legs, calves, hamstrings, back body. It's hard, it's challenging, it also feels good. It's not quite a resting pose though, so if at any time you need to rest, child's pose is your best friend. If child's pose just doesn't feel good, then just rest and join me when you can. Take a deep breath wherever you are. Well, if you're not in down dog, join me in down dog and then sigh out that breath. 
Inhale, shift forward into plank pose. Make sure your shoulders are over wrists and just step your feet back a tiny bit so the balls of your feet are right underneath your heels. You might be uh, cursing me out in your head after you do that, <laughs> but it is really good for you. Squeeze your hands to the midline, draw your ribs and your navel in, hug your inner thighs, engage your glutes, try to smile, plank is good for you. Inhale, shift forward to the very tips of your toes. Then you could put your knees down and as you go to Chaturanga, draw your shoulder blades down. Untuck your toes, either up dog or lower high cobra, up to you. Exhale, lift your hips up, downward facing dog. Let's do a couple more rounds of a vinyasa together, but I really want you to allow your breathing to guide your movement. So inhale to come into plank. Exhale to lower down to chaturanga. Inhale to come into a back bend of your choice, cobra or up dog. Exhale, lift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. One more time, know that you can modify if needed. Inhale, shift forward into plank. Your modifications can have your knees down for chaturanga. Inhale, either cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, lift up and back, downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in, I know I need it. This time stick out your tongue as you exhale. Bring your feet together. We need to get off of our hands, don't we? Look forward as you inhale to your toes. Bend your knees, you can step or take a light hop to the front of the mat. Big toes touching, a little space between your heels. Inhale to a flat back. You could also have your feet hips width. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, little bend in the knees as you sweep your arms out to come up. Gaze up as your palms come to touch, lift your heart. Exhale, hands come to your heart center. Take a moment here with your eyes closed. Once again, just feeling the presence of your body how these poses, this practice affects your body and even your mind. And before we flow more together, I'd like to set an intention. Pride Month is about awareness. It's about change, but there are so many steps towards change. Observation, awareness, accountability. I'd like for you to take a moment to allow this idea of awareness to guide you through your practice because when you develop that personal awareness, then you can actually spread it. Now inhale, sigh it out, exhale. Take your hands by your sides, shake them out. Open your eyes and inhale, sweep your arms out to come up. Exhale, forward folding down. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, step your left foot back. Place your left knee down onto the ground and inhale, rise your arms up. Just a brief Anjaneyasana, getting the back body engaged, opening into the front of that left hip flexor area. Exhale, take your hands down, step back, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Now, if the vinyasas are too much, you can always step back into down dog. Bring your feet together. Imagine that there were a zipper starting at the insides of your ankles. You're going to zip your legs all the way up through the inseam so they stay together. As you inhale, rise high to your toes. Look forward, bend your knees. Now, this is our landing position. Notice that when you land with bent knees, you have some shock absorbers. Now, as you exhale, you're gonna hop up, kick your heels to your butt, just land straight back down, knees bent. Three more times, exhale, hop up, come down. Two more, hop up, come down. Bring those hips over on that last one and jump forward to the front of the mat. Inhale to a flat back, exhale, fold down. Inhale, rising all the way up. Exhale, hands to your heart. 
Great job, shake it out. Now, I know those hops are really not easy, right guys? <laughs> You're not supposed to be there, but you are. <laughs> They're not easy, but you guys are going to try your best, and it's okay if your hops are small, it's okay if they're higher. It's okay if you want to go to handstand. You could even practice at a wall. That's the benefit of practicing together while you're at home. Now let's do two more rounds of that. We got this. <laughs> Feet together. Inhale, sweep your arms out and up. Exhale, swan dive forward. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, stepping your left foot back. Placing your left knee down onto the ground. Inhale, rise your arms up. Exhale, bring your hands down, step back, vinyasa. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Big breath here, bringing your feet together. Each exhalation, think about finding strength. Each inhalation helps you find length. That's why when we inhale, we rise to our toes, bend our knees, five more hops, exhale, hop, land back down. Exhale, hop, land back down, three more. Each time, keep your arms super straight, gaze between your wrists, and on that last hop, jump forward to the front of the mat. Inhale to a flat back, exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, let's fold all the way right back down. Keep it moving. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, this time right foot steps back. Right knee comes down. Inhale, big breath, Anjaneyasana. Exhale, try to get straight to Chaturanga upon that one exhalation. Lengthening your breathing. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Breathing here. If you've lost your breath, you could even take a child's pose. Bring your feet together. Tell yourself you've got this. Even if the expression of this variation is jumping a tiny, tiny bit, that's totally fine. Look forward as you rise to your toes, bend your knees and hop up. So the first step, you might just be kicking your heels to your butt. Then on that second or third hop, can you allow your hips to come over a little bit more and land as softly as possible at the front of your mat. Inhale, flat back, exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. Last round, can we do this? We can, exhale, fold all the way down. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, stepping your right foot back. Right knee down, inhale, reach your arms up. Now can you do this with me? Big breath in, exhale straight to Chaturanga. Inhale up dog, exhale, downward facing dog. All right, last chance. We've got this. <laughs> I say this for myself. Bring your feet together. Look forward. Now just commit to one little piece of it happening for you here. So if you just keep your arms straight and do little hops, heels to butt, that's totally fine. You might shorten your down dog a little and bring your hips over just a tad bit more. Try that. Oof. Feeling that in my arms. Yes. Land at the front of the mat. Inhale, flat back. Take your feet hips within distance. And exhale, fold, we're gonna stay here. Grab a hold of opposite elbows. Mm. Do your best to regulate your breathing. You can sway from side to side. Mm. Drop your hands down. Let your arms just rest and relax where they dropped. Put a pretty deep bend in your knees. And then inhale slowly, just unroll yourself up to standing. Hmm. Roll the shoulders back. Ooh, that was a good warm up. I'd say I'm pretty warm. Now take your hands into a prayer position. Going to open your palms towards you 
and then take the palms to face out and roll them down. So anytime I'm doing yoga, I always make sure to counter all of that wrist extension. And this is just a really quick way to do it. Switch directions. The great thing about this yoga studio is it's warm. We're so lucky. Been doing lives from my house. It is not warm. It's great to be sweating. I hope you're sweating with me. Good, just take one arm across the body. Arms overhead a lot. Gets into the neck and shoulders. And we're gonna flow again, take the other side. So I wanna make sure you don't end up with neck tension or stress in the neck, shoulders area. We wanna feel good and strong. All right, shake it out. Bring your big toes to touch. A little space between your heels, hands by your side. This is one of my least favorite poses, but I know I need it. So if you love chair pose, say, yay, I love chair pose. Bend your knees, tap the ground with your fingertips. So bah, 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 there we go. <laughs> Everyone wants to go straight into it. You know why? Because we're like, chair pose. If we squat down nice and low, we tap the ground on the outside of the feet, move the shins back, then we know we're actually getting it in the area that we need it to be, right? Hamstrings, glutes. Then from there, you can begin to bring the torso up. The arms are really just icing on the cake. This is a yogi squat. You're gonna feel your quads, squeeze your inner thighs, engage your glutes. If you can and you'd like to, it doesn't affect the lower part of the body, take the arms overhead. Try to smile. I know I'm really trying to smile. If you want a little more, come up onto the balls of your feet. Ah. Inhale and exhale. See how slowly you can squat down onto your heels. Oh my quads. Open your legs out wide. Now, if you can't bring your heels back, it doesn't matter. You can stay on the balls of your feet and just take your arms forward. We're going to work into Bakasana at some point and I really want you guys to get your uh, glutes working hard, to get your side body nice and open so that you can bring your knees up onto your triceps, but don't go there yet. If you can bring your heels back, great. Wrap your triceps around the front of your shins. Put your hands underneath your heels and then pull. Crown of your head down. Hmm. And then inhale. Rise your torso back up. Here's the hard part. See if you can balance without your fingertips on the ground and come back into that toe stand. Whew. Then see if you can stand up on the balls of your feet. Oh my gosh. Inhale and exhale. Put your heels down. Fold all the way down. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, step or hop it back through your vinyasa. Downward facing dog. Shake your head out, relax your jaw. Most importantly, I hope that you're having fun, because I am, and it'd be great if you were having fun with me. Bring your feet together. Rise to the balls of your feet, and then lift your right leg up. My right leg is really engaged here, so point your toes and use the back of your leg to lift that right leg up. Then maybe you can press your left heel down towards the mat. Get a pretty deep stretch in that left calf or in those left calf muscles. Inhale and exhale. Shift your shoulders forward for plank pose and pull your right knee in towards the space between your elbows. Now from here, inhale. Exhale, lower your right knee down onto the ground. So your right shin is on the mat. This is just a great excuse to rest for a second. You can lift your heart up. It's like a back bend here. Then exhale, round. Pull that right knee into your chest, knee to nose. Four more, inhale, back bend, exhale, round. Inhale, back bend, exhale, round. Stick with me, last one, inhale, back bend. Now give it all you got, exhale, round, lift your hips up, flex your right foot, step it forward between your hands. And if you didn't get there, just use your right hand, move your right foot forward. Place your left knee down onto the ground and rise up into Anjaneyasana. Now in your Anjane, you can even rest your arms for a second. Get the lower body right here because this is a lower body pose. So make sure your right shin is in a nice straight line. Drive down through your right heel and then think about hugging your inner thighs together. I know us flexi people want to dip down nice and low, but we get so much more effectiveness in the entire pose if we squeeze in. Draw your lower belly in, sweep your arms out to come up. 
Spread your fingers. Tuck your left toes under. Find a focal point out in front of you. Smile. And then lift your left knee up off the ground. Ooh, you've got this. When you do that, you want to feel your left gluteal muscles really firm in. Draw your lower belly and sink a bit deeper. Firm the inner thighs together. That's that mula bandha, those pelvic floor muscles. You're like, Bryce, stop talking. We need to get out of this pose. But it's so good for you. Now inhale and exhale. Lean forward at a 45 degree angle over your right thigh. Come onto the very tip of your back toe, big toe, and see if you can come up into that warrior three. You can even bring your hands into a prayer position. Again, these lower body postures, focused postures, it's really about the legs. The arms are icing on the cake. So hands at your heart or by your sides, like you're flying. Find that balance on your right foot. Straighten your right leg so you feel your quads in the front of the leg there tone. Squeeze your inner thighs together and you should feel your glutes working on both sides. Then draw your ribs and navel in. Lift that left leg up a little bit higher. Maybe the arms go forward to charge that pose, inhale. Exhale, step back, plank pose, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Hmm. How are you doing? <laughs> Ask yourself that. Rest if you need to take a rest, otherwise we're gonna move forward. You've got this, guys. Bring your feet together. Rise to the balls of your feet and lift your left leg up. Bring awareness to that lifted leg. It's not just gone, right? You can't see it, but that requires even more attention. Point your toes. Use the back of the leg to stay lifted. Then your right heel can lower down. You're gonna feel those muscles in the back of that leg because we just worked those muscles hard. Whew. Inhale. Exhale, bring your left knee forward as your shoulders come over your wrists in that tiger curl. Then we get a little break as you put your left shin down onto the ground. Lift your heart up like an upward facing dog. Then let's do this together. You got it, exhale, pull your left knee in, knee to nose. Put it down, inhale. Exhale, pull it in. Three more, inhale. Exhale, pull it in. Two more. Exhale, feel the frontal core work. Last one, exhale, pull it in. Now you have to push through your hands. Lift your hips up and then step your left foot forward. That is a hard transition. Place your right knee down onto the ground and inhale. Just lift your torso up over your pelvis. You can take a break with those arms. Placing your hands on the tops of your knee or on the top of your knee. And you can use that to push your torso back. So instead of being here or here, think about really hugging the inner thighs together. And the more that you tuck your right toes under and drive the right knee down, you'll feel your hip flexors really begin to stretch, maybe the quads. Okay, we've got this transition. Let's do it together. Take your arms up. Find a focal point, we call it a drishti out in front of you. Helps you stay determined. With your right toes tucked under, squeeze your inner thighs and then lift your right knee up off of the mat. As soon as you get there, bend into your left knee Drive down through the left heel, and then really straighten your back leg to your best ability. Push back through the right heel, lift up through the inner right thigh, squeeze your inner thighs. All right, inhale, exhale, lean forward at that 45 degree angle. Arms can be back next to your hips. Look down as you come onto the very tip of your right big toe, and then stand on that left leg for warrior three. Hands can be at the heart, by your sides. Feel all that dancing your left foot is doing. It's helping you balance. Straighten your left leg by using the quads. You can even feel them, are they firm? Squeeze your thighs in. Draw your navel in. You'll even feel your glutes working. Maybe the arms can go forward for a brief moment. Inhale and exhale, step back, plank pose. You could skip those vinyasas or keep it moving if you're looking for more work. Find your downward facing dog. I think we could do a little child's pose. <laughs> Come on down onto your shins, rest your forehead on the mat. Hmm. Oh. Well, I have a timer here to tell me how far I'm going, but it's not moving. So, <laughs> we're 30 minutes in, that's perfect. I could stay here all day with you guys, but since we're 30 minutes in, Let's definitely get 
or utilize all of this sweat and warm muscles to get into something challenging. You guys ready for some crow? Okay, so come back into that downward facing dog. Hmm. We just need to make our way to the front of the mat. There is a fun way to do it, <laughs> but it's kind of challenging. We'll try it together. Take your feet as wide as the mat, but turn your heels in and your toes out, like a squat position. Now look forward, and when you jump forward, you're gonna do two things. First, you're gonna clap your feet before your feet land, and then you're gonna land them around your hands. And if you're like, what? What'd she say? Take a look. So I rise to my toes, bend the knees, I jump up, clap, and I land in a squat. And if you can't quite land in that squat, you can land more in an elevated squat with your hands on the ground. So let's do that again. Look forward, toes, bend, clap, squat. Then you jump back, bent knees, down dog, and you do it again. And if that was easy, can you clap twice and land in that squat? And then if that was easy, can you clap more than three times? <laughs> Just for fun. Then we'll land in that malasana. I wish I could see all of you guys. That would be so fun. Uh, but I do have some very talented practitioners in the room that are doing a great job. So find that squat. If this is impossible for your body, you can stay really elevated. You can roll the mat up if you like, place it underneath your heels. You can also do a squat on the balls of your feet. Nothing wrong with that. I'll even do it with you. Take your elbows to your inner knees and push the knees out wide with the elbows. Now, what are we doing here? We're opening the inner groins, but really what we're doing is strengthening the glutes. So can you keep your knees that open without your elbows, even with your heels on the ground? You should be shaking. Good, now put your hands on the ground. Bring your feet together into that toe stand. Move back a bit so that you're not off of your mat. Now we're gonna place our hands down flat underneath our shoulders, then lift our hips up. Open your knees a little bit, even though your feet are together, and bend your elbows, finding a shelf on your triceps. Place your knees as high as you can. If you can't quite get your knees high, place them right above your elbows, and then lean forward. I'm protracting my shoulder blades, just like we've been doing in cats. The more weight I can get into my hands, the easier it will be to lift one foot up, and if I do, my toes are pointed Maybe it's two feet. Maybe I straighten my arms. Maybe it's one foot at a time. Jump back, chaturanga. Or you could just step back, downward facing dog. Whew. Great job. Big breath in. Sigh it out. Find your ujjayi breath. Whatever your expression of that challenging pose was, let it be. We're not graded or valued on how good we are at yoga. We're valued as much as we're willing to give that value to ourselves. So let this practice be fun, let it be inspiring. You have the power to feel good. Bring your feet together, inhale, right leg up. Exhale, step it forward. Warrior two, spin that left heel down. Line your right heel up with the arch of your left foot and windmill up. Your right arm is forward, your left arm is back. Just enough to wipe the sweat off of your brow. Bend a little bit deeper into that right knee. Now take a moment to gaze over your right fingertips. Come back to that intention. Intentions can be fuel for us to either move through our practice, move through life, Bend a little bit deeper. Engage your belly, broaden across your collarbones. Flip your right palm, inhale, reverse your warrior, straighten your right leg, because you deserve it. Exhale, trikonasana. Bring your right fingertips down either to your right shin, a block on the outside of your right foot if you need. Left arm up. Draw your ribs in. The more you push through the outer edge of your left foot and lengthen through the crown of your head, the deeper the stretch will be on that left side body. Bend into your right knee, inhale, rise up into that warrior two. Bring your hands to your heart. Straighten your right leg, turn your toes in. So based on your flexibility, if you know you have a lot of length, you can shorten your stance. If you know you need it a bit wider, fine. 
Take your arms up as you inhale. A little bend in your knees as you exhale, fold down. Prasarita Padottanasana. Now as you push through the outer edges of your feet, also rise that energy up through your legs. You want to feel the fronts of your legs engaging. You could even use your hands to squeeze your quadricep muscles. Make sure they're turned on. You can crawl your arms underneath your body. Maybe even get the crown of the head down. And if you're like, hey, we're in the perfect position to do some sort of headstand, feel free to do so. Maybe it's a tripod headstand. Or Shirsasana A or Baddha Shirsasana. You're also going to get just as much of a benefit from staying in the stretch. Your head is below your heart in both of your poses. Hopefully inviting in a little more calm, <laughs> if that's possible right now. If you're upside down, go ahead and slowly come down. Inhale to a flat back. Little bend in your knees. I want you to turn your heels in, your toes out for a goddess position. Take your hands one at a time to your knees. Inhale, push through your knees to lengthen your spine. And then exhale, twist to one side. Doesn't matter which side you go to at first. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, twist to the other side. Inhale, back to center. With a smile, reach your arms up. And then stand all the way up. We're going to turn to the back of the mat. So turn your left toes forward, your right heel back, and bend into a warrior two. So the left leg is forward, the right leg is behind you. Try to smile. We're not gonna hold it that long, I promise. Inhale. Exhale, windmill your hands down and end up in a standing split on your left leg. Now for this variation of standing splits, I wanna encourage you to keep your hips squared because actually we're gonna use this as an entryway into a handstand hop. If you don't wanna go upside down into handstand, keep your standing splits. We'll meet back and down dog or child pose. You can also use a wall. Now hop your left foot back a bit so it's more towards the center of your mat. Just make sure my mic doesn't fall on my head when I go upside down. Then place your hands underneath your shoulders. Grip the mat with your fingertips, and I want you to do a bit of that cat position. It's like you're rounding so that you're looking between your wrists and not your thumbs. Then inhale, rise to the ball of your left foot, bend your left knee, and take a few hops off that left foot. Doesn't matter, once again, how high you go. If you wanna take that handstand and it's feeling good, do it. If you're done, step it back through your vinyasa, and we'll meet in downward facing dog. I have really good news for you. This is the last part of our sequence. And maybe that's not good news. I know I'm enjoying this so much, especially on this beautifully colored mat. It's really adding to the energy of my class right now. All right, let's do this together with presence, with love, with awareness. Bring your feet together. Inhale, left leg rises up. Exhale, step your left foot forward. Warrior two, as you spin your right heel down, windmill your arms up. <sighs> Try to make sure that your left toes and your left knee point directly forward. Engage your glutes as you bend down deep into your left knee. You'll also feel your hamstrings. Gazing over your left fingertips. Hey, we were just here. It's a familiar place. How does it feel the second time around? Now that you know what to expect, we're not going to be here for too long, but use it as a way to really sink in to where you are right now, in your body, and your practice. Flip your left palm, inhale, reverse your warrior, straighten your left leg, you guys, you deserve it. Then exhale, Trikonasana. Now that left hand can come to your left shin or the outside of your left foot on a block. Ooh, push back through that right heel and think about lengthening the crown of your head away from that right pinky toe edge of the foot. So you draw your ribs in, you'll feel a bit more of that stretch. Hmm. Bend back into your left knee. Straighten your leg. Turn your toes in, your heels out. This time we're gonna take our hands behind our back, just like we did in the beginning. Press your palms together. Lift your heart up as you inhale. 
Exhale, fold all the way down. Ooh, thank you, shoulder stretch. Now, if you wanna go upside down, go ahead. Any inversion that you can do from this position, it's up to you. If you wanna do an extra shoulder stretch with me, drop your hands down onto the ground. Find a flat back as you inhale. Heel toe your feet a bit closer together. Bit complicated, so listen. Up, right hand grabs your left ankle. And then your left hand crosses, your left arm crosses over, grabs the right ankle. And if you can't reach, just narrow your stance. Hold on tight and just begin to isometrically pull your ankles towards one another with your arms, but heel toe your feet apart. Until you feel a stretch, I feel mine in the right shoulder, top of the shoulder, the anterior deltoids. And then release, inhale to a flat back. We'll do the other side. So this time, left hand to right ankle first, right hand to left ankle, and of course, shorten your stance so that you can get there. And then pull isometrically as you heel toe your feet apart. If you're upside down, come on down. And release that shoulder stretch. Inhale to a flat back. Turn your heels in, your toes out, squat down. Bring your hands to your knees, and we'll do that twist again. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist. Try to open that opposite shoulder. Push your knees away from the center line of the body. Maybe even gaze up towards the shoulder you're twisting towards. Inhale, back to center. Exhale to the other side. This is our standing twist. Inhale, back to center. Try to smile. Can you keep your knees pushing out? Reach your arms up. Straighten your legs, open your arms, turn your right toes forward and bend into your right knee. Warrior two. Last time, not too long. See if you can feel what muscles you're using in your legs. I feel my hamstrings on that right leg. I feel my glutes on that right side, even my left side glutes. Inhale and exhale, windmill your hands down. Slide your right foot back towards the center of the mat and stand into standing splits. Try to keep your hips squared here so your left leg is really not gonna lift as high as you're used to, but that'll help you with your handstand. Squeeze your inner thighs together, maybe pull your forehead in towards the right shin. And then find that handstand prep. Hands underneath your shoulders. Your fingertips are your brakes, so keep your fingertips gripping down. Now inhale and exhale. Spread your shoulder blades and draw your ribs in so your gaze ends up between your wrists. And then take a few hops. Plugging your bottom leg thigh bone into your hips. So that will help you bring your hips over your shoulders. Woo. And when you're done with that, take it back through your vinyasa. Or skip it. Find downward facing dog. Now try to stay in this down dog just for a brief moment. Stay here. We'll lower the music down if possible. Find your breath. Final pose in your standing sequence. Feel the difference between your body then and now. One more deep ujjayi breath. Sigh it out. Child's pose. Mm. Just rest your forehead on the mat. Just take a moment to marinate in your sweat, in your practice. It's not over yet. Relax your neck, your shoulders. Feel the mat hold you up here. And we're gonna use that last Little bit of energy we have. Bring your fingertips underneath your shoulders. Sit on up. Send your legs out in front of you. We gotta do what's an aligned flow without some core work, right? We did a lot of core work, but some seated and reclined core work. I'm really excited about this. 
hopefully you are too. Take your legs out in front of you, lean back onto the backs of your sits bones. Okay, we're gonna find a bit of a Navasana. So you can always stay here and come up onto your toes if needed. You can also lift your legs up so your shins and calves are more parallel to the ground. You could even straighten your legs, pointing your toes. The more you lean your shoulders back, the more you're gonna feel your ribs wanna open. Keep gripping them. Inhale, try to smile. Exhale, roll your tailbone forward so that you can straighten your legs and slowly lower down Ardha Navasana. Inhale here, exhale, pull up and really bring your thighs to your chest. Inhale, lower. Exhale, you're crunching in. Inhale, lower. Exhale, crunch in. You got this. Inhale, lower. Exhale, pull in. You're asking, is Bri counting? Exhale, pull in. We're just gonna go as long as Bri can go. No, we got three more. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, pull in. Inhale, exhale, pull in. Now inhale, lower down. Make a peaceful yogi gun. Drop your head down, drop your legs down for a moment. Lift your right leg up. Reach your arms overhead. Now you can always do this with your left foot on the ground. Inhale, exhale, twist towards the right. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, pump through center. Inhale, drop back, switch legs, twist towards the left. So that bottom leg can be on the ground. Exhale, come through center. Switch legs. Exhale, twist towards the right. Or the bottom leg can be lifted, like I'm doing now. Come to center. Drop back, switch legs. Exhale to the left. Two more rounds. Exhale, center. Inhale, drop back, switch legs, exhale to the right. Last round, inhale, drop back, exhale to center. Inhale, drop back, switch legs, exhale to the left. Now take your arms forward, drop your legs almost to the ground, hold it five, four, three, two, one. Drop all the way down. Oh, core work is amazingly exhausting. Great job. You got this. You did it. I say that as if this next part is not hard. <laughs> now, bridge pose. This, this is one of the most challenging poses in my yoga repertoire just because I've always had weak hamstrings, weak glutes, but they're getting stronger. So we always think of bridge pose as a back bend. Sure, it is. It strengthens the back of your body. But what it really, really does is it primes your glutes and hamstrings to be ready to lift your pelvis. So make sure that your feet are hips within distance, your shins are in a nice straight line to your best ability, and then your feet are hips width apart. You're gonna lift your hips up. Now notice that if when you lift your hips up, your knees splay out, your body's doing this path of least resistance thing. So try your best to keep your knees in line with your hip points. And as you lift your hips up, push down through your heels, keep your ribs and navel drawing in, and try to lift your hips as high as you can. That's when you're gonna begin to feel it in your glutes and your hamstrings. Then you can work from shoulder to shoulder, interlace your fingers underneath your body, and press your palms together. Now this part of it will help to open across the shoulders, maybe the back of the neck strength, or lengthens I should say. If you want to take it further, you can lift one leg up and go up and down with the hips. Ha ha. <laughs> I do this every day. Crazy like that. You can switch sides. One leg up. You could even be bent and you just move up and down with your hips and at the top, you really want to feel your glutes engage. And if you're like, okay, where's the yoga poses? You can take your bridge into Urdhva Dhanurasana. Plant your hands next to your head. Push through the crown of your head and rise up. Do your best to straighten your arms. You don't have to get there. Keep your knees in a neutral position and then really walk your feet in so your chest moves through the gateway of your arms. Inhale and exhale, releasing down. Nice and slow. Whew. Take your feet as wide as your mat. Let your knees drop in. Hmm, now you've really made it. <sighs> that was not easy. We're just gonna do a couple of cool down poses here. Pull your right knee into your chest. Straighten your left leg. Flex your left foot 
and really straighten that left leg so the left inner thigh rolls down. You can stay here all the while, pulling your right knee into your chest. You can straighten your right leg, flex the foot, grab a hold of the hamstrings, the calves, the toe tips, or traditional way, grabbing the big toe with your peace sign fingers. I'm gonna move into a supine twist. You can always bend your right knee and twist that way. If you wanna take it into the straight leg variation, left hand grabs the pinky toe edge of your right foot and you twist that straight right leg across your body. The little trick here is as you twist, you wanna tuck your left hip underneath you so that when you come into the twist, your hips are stacked. Open your right arm out towards the right. Gaze past your right shoulder. Try your best to draw your outer right hip down towards your left heel. It's gonna feel like you're trying to squeeze your inner thighs together. You could even do both variations, like straight or bent. Inhale back to center. You're gonna stay with your right knee here. Just bend your left knee, place your right ankle over your left knee, and take a recline to pigeon. I like to grab a hold of my left shin. There's a little more to grab like that. If you're feeling a bit too tight there, you could just interlace your fingers around your left hamstrings. And you might already feel something, just depending on where you're tight, if it's the hamstrings or the glutes. But you also wanna think about pressing your right knee away from you as you draw your left knee in towards your chest. Close your eyes. Relax your jaw. If there are variations you like to practice from this pose, it's your practice. Always feel free to go there. Deep breaths. Imagine that at the end of each exhalation, you're releasing more and more tension. Take a deep breath in. Sigh it out. Release your leg. Place your right foot on the ground. Pull your left knee into your chest. Straighten your right leg out in front of you. Flex your right foot. Try to get it super straight. And you can always stay here. You get a nice stretch in the base of your hamstrings, your glutes. And if you did it on the other side, Straighten your left leg. You can hold on to your hamstrings, calves, all of your toes, which I like to do because I get that extra calf stretch, calf muscle stretch. Or go for that traditional supta parangustasana with your peace sign fingers wrapping around your big toe. Now either bent knee variation or straight leg or both pinky toe edge of your left foot in your right hand or outside edge of your left knee in your right hand, twist. Now when you twist, you really wanna tuck your right hip underneath you so that your hips are stacked. Think about rooting your left shoulder blade down. I get this question a lot when I teach trainings. My online trainings, this one video of this pose gets so many questions. What are we doing? Should we let that left knee come down, the left shoulder blade? Personally, I think keeping the shoulder blades rooted protects the lower back. It's less of a twist and more of a lengthening pose from your left shoulder, uh, front of the shoulders, down through the erector muscles that line the left side of the spine. If you in that, or some of us can actually feel a stretch in the glutes. Inhale back to center. Bend your right knee. Cross your left ankle over your right knee and then thread the needle so your left arm goes through the keyhole, right arm goes around the outside of your right leg. You can hold on to your hamstrings, cross the front of your shin. This is where I personally hold a lot of my tension. My hips. 
So it's really important here as you feel a sensation, as you feel a stretch, not to go too deep into it, but instead to allow your breath to guide you as if your inhalations were to identify those tight spots and those exhalations were to create a little space between you and that tension. After all, coming back to that intention, awareness, in order for us to be aware, we need to be able to create that space, that pause, that ability to observe. And that's what this yoga practice offers us. Why do we feel so good after we've been on the mats? Because we have space. We've created it for ourselves and our body and our mind and our life. And then it's about you taking that space off the mat, making a difference in your life and in others. Take a deep breath with me. Sigh it out. And releasing your feet down onto the mat. <clears throat> Straightening your legs out in front of you. If there's anything else you need to do to close your practice, feel free to do so. If you're ready and you're antsy, I encourage you just to join me for Shavasana, just for a little bit. I know my mind just wants to get up off the mat, especially when I'm practicing at home and just want to go do things. But this Shavasana is so crucial to what I just talked about, to creating that space for yourself. So take your feet as wide as the mat, let your feet drop open. Your arms are in a position that feels relaxing to you. Close your eyes if you haven't already and just allow your eyes to rest back as they do feel the muscles in your face release. Allow your neck and shoulders and arms to rest back into the mat. All of that hard work you did just now in your lower body, the legs, the core. Let the tension melt away. more you allow this shavasana to do its work, you'll realize as all of that tension and stress and expectations and worries and fears, as they melt away, you'll see what's underneath all of that is everything you need. You already have it right there within you. I won't keep you too long. Feel free to stay here in Shavasana for as long as it serves you. If you're ready to sit up and say namaste, then go ahead and bend your knees into your chest. Roll to one side and press yourself at your own pace up to a seated position. <clears throat> Bring your hands to your heart center. And allow your eyes to open and your lips to curl up into a smile. Thank you so much for joining me. Big thanks to Aloe and Aloe Moves and all of you. Namaste.